Okay, welcome everybody to this week's lecture and today we will cover two different topics. First topic will be problem solving and the second topic will be expertise and problem solving will be the major part of that and expertise will be a comparatively smaller part. This is the overview of today, so we will have an introduction, this is the first part, then we have two videos speaking about uh, the different theories. The first video will cover behaviorism, gestalt psychology and representational change theory and the second video then uh, the information processing approach and analogical problem solving. And then we have a final video on expertise which we will, will be a little bit shorter. Okay, let's start with a little introduction and I would like to start with this uh, little clip from the Big Bang Theory which I think very nicely introduces the uh, idea and concept of problem solving. Hmm. The problem appears to be unsolvable. Maybe we could run some computer simulations. There are too many variables that would take forever. We've got to be missing something. Let's start again. The movie is playing here at 7.20, here at 7.40, <laughs> here at 8.10, and here at 8.45. All right, these theaters have to be eliminated. Why? They're state-of-the-art, digital projection, 20 channels surround sound. Yes, but they have no icy machines. <laughs> Despite my aggressive letter-writing campaign, I might add. Wait, what about the multiplex here? The seats are terrific. They have Twizzlers instead of Red Vines. No amount of lumbar support can compensate for that. <laughs> Well, it's going to take at least an hour to eat, and I don't see a Sheldon-approved restaurant proximate to a Sheldon-approved theater. We could eat off to the movie. Unacceptable. The delay would result in tomorrow morning's bowel movement occurring at work. <laughs> hang on, hang on. There's a 7-Eleven here. We smuggle Slurpees, which are essentially ices, in under our coats after having a pleasant meal either here, here, or here. Wow. I don't see how we missed that. Excuse me, in what universe are Slurpees Ices? <laughs> That's how we missed it. Sheldon, would you be prepared on a non-presidential basis to create an emergency ad hoc Slurpee Icy equivalency? Oh, Leonard, you know I can't do that. <laughs> okay, I guess we only have one option. Yep, I don't see any way around it. Bye, Sheldon. See ya. Then do it. <laughs> They're right, it was the only option. <laughs> okay, so much for that as a little introduction to the topic. And you can see they did find a solution, even if it wasn't the best for Sheldon. So, what is a problem? And this has been illustrated nicely in that video. The problem is if we are in a current state or a situation, and this is called the start state, and we want to be in a different state. That is called the goal state. And what is crucial for that, so that it qualifies as a problem, is that it's not obvious of how we get from the start state to the goal state. And a typical example would be, um, aside the one we just have seen, uh, finding food when stranded on a desert island. That's not that easy. So what is not a problem according to that definition? Um, and it's not a problem if it's obvious to us how we reach the goal state. So if we are hungry and we are at home, then we can just open the fridge unless you are one of the stereotypical students who has a completely empty fridge. But even then, we could just go to the next takeout or something like that. Um, but this example can also nicely illustrate that things which uh, might be very obvious for us, so not a problem, might be a problem for others. So problems are actually subjective. And think about little children who might be hungry and um, who can't get food themselves that easily. And in this example, I think that was a story of where a dog learned how to open the fridge, so he solved the problem just to the not delight of his owner, because from that moment on the, it was kind of a self-service for the dog to get to the fridge. There are different types of problems. They have been classified. And um, 
these types can be classified by the definition of how well the sorry how well the start state goal state and strategies are um, defined and we have so-called well-defined problems and so-called ill-defined problems we will see examples of these different types in a moment and the second way of how to classify the problems is the amount of knowledge which we need to solve the problem. So there are knowledge lean problems and knowledge rich problems. So let's have a look. Well-defined problems are problems where basically all aspects of the problem are clearly specified. So they are well defined. We know exactly the start state, we know exactly the goal state, and we know what we can do to reach the goal. So let's say possible moves or strategies to reach that. And typical examples could be finding your way out of the maze you know where you start, you know your goal is to find the exit, and your moves are to walk along the path and not to run through the bushes. Another example is playing chess. You have the start position, the goal is checkmate, and the moves and strategies are well defined and explained. Okay. The other type of problems were, were ill-defined problems, where the problem is underspecified. So it might be unclear what exactly is my starting point, or what exactly do I need, or the goal state where I want to get to, how exactly does it look like, and also the strategies of how to get there might be unclear. And suppose, as an example, you have a very urgent appointment and you locked your keys in your car. So what could you do? You may call for help, but it may take too long to, for the help to arrive. You may try it yourself, but that potentially fails, unless you are practicing that. You could smash the window, be quite straightforward with that, but that incurs additional costs. So you could think of strategies, but nothing is ideal, so it's, it's hard to know how to solve that problem in the best way, to be on time to your appointment. Um, just further examples, because um, basically in our everyday life, most of the problems we are facing are ill-defined problems. For example, <clears throat> if you're studying or in school and you have to write an essay, that is an ill-defined problem, because of course the goal is clearly defined as get an A star or as good grade as possible, but how? How do you do that? How exactly has the perfect essay to look like? That's much more difficult to define than in chess to say, okay, it needs to be checkmate. And that means the king of the opponent is not able to move anymore and you can um, beat him with another figure. Just as an example. Or being punctual on a date. Because there are so many variables in getting there, you may even need to use public transport, which may not be the most reliable thing. Um, and related to that, getting from A to B using public transport when there's a tube strike day. So do you call a taxi, but taxis may not be available. Do you walk, do you cycle? Loads of different things. I hope that illustrated that. Now we said we have uh, one type of classification, well-defined and ill-defined, and the other type of classification is regarding knowledge. How much knowledge do I need to solve the problem? And knowledge-rich problems are problems which we can only solve when we really have specific background knowledge for that problem. And when we look at studies in expertise, which we cover in the second part of this lecture, then these studies often use knowledge-rich problems. And a typical example is uh, chess, for example. Another example is uh, to find a fault and repair an electronic device. You need to know background knowledge about how the device exactly is working, which components work, which way that when you use this, um, how's it called, soldering thing, 
that you don't overheat elements to break them and things like that. And knowledge lean problems, you don't need any specific knowledge for that. And with the problem statement itself, you already have all relevant information. And the example from before, which we had, perfectly qualifies as a knowledge lean problem, find your way out of a maze. You don't need to know much more than that. You know, okay, there is an exit, there is an outside world, and I can walk along the maze and have to find and search for it. So to, summary, to summarize, we have well-defined versus ill-defined problems, and we have knowledge-rich versus knowledge-lean problems. Of course, um, the boundaries between each of them are, uh, are fluid, and there's not, it's not always possible to say this is very clearly a well-defined or very clearly an ill-defined problem. Uh, this is a smooth transition between these, these extreme endpoints. And both types are independent of each other. So we have all potential combinations like uh, well-defined, knowledge-rich, well-defined, knowledge-lean, and ill-defined, knowledge-rich, and ill-defined, knowledge-lean problem. And in research in psychology on problem solving, uh, mostly well-defined knowledge lean problems are used. And it's quite easy to understand why, because they can be performed by everybody, because they are knowledge lean, people don't need background knowledge, and because they are well-defined, they usually also have a pretty optimal strategy for their solution, and the the performance can be nicely measured because we have a defined start state which we can create and we can very easily identify when the goal state has been reached okay so we can nicely describe and assess the errors and deficiencies in the strategies and in in the um, approaches to solve the problem as usual, if you have any questions, please post them on the relevant discussion forums on BBL. And hopefully see you in a bit for the second part.